Blessings. <laughs> and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser and Reverend Dexter Pelser. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Amen. Blessings. You know, the scripture tells us that to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and to render unto God what is God and that we're to submit to authority. And the word also says that he's the one that puts leaders in place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So today the program is going to be kind of different. Um, we're going to be talking about blessing our president. Why should we bless our president? What does the scripture say about that? Amen. So before we start, I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just ask the Holy Spirit to come and take control of the program, Lord. And Father, we just bless the president of all the nations of the world. And we ask them, Lord, that they will govern with your heart, with justice and righteousness in their heart, Father. And we bless them in the name of Jesus to walk in wisdom and to govern with justice and righteousness. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Dexter, <clears throat> blessing our president. Okay, so um, Marisol is usually the one who has lots of dreams and visions and things, but I had one just when I was with the Lord um, that he showed me, and I feel like it's really important. It's interesting that it happened this week, and with the Supreme Court nominee and everything else that's happening, um, I'm, I'm learning more and more, even with the past election, the way God just dealt with us during the election to vote for President Trump when we really didn't want to in the beginning, to be honest, because of what we felt were character issues and how God dealt with us. I know we've shared that in another teaching, but um, he's really asked us to have his eyes um, and stop having the eyes that the world has and believing everything the world is saying, but have his eyes and his vision for what he's doing. And even if he's doing it through someone like King Cyrus or something else, where he's getting decrees and things done on his earth for his purposes, and particularly for his beloved apple of his eye, his nation of Israel, when he's preparing things for his purposes on this earth, for example, to bless Israel, and for the nation of the United States to bless Israel, I think we really have to pay attention, even if sometimes the instrument to do that is not always what we expect. Sometimes he uses the, the foolish to confound the wise, and boy, I've seen that so many times in ministry. I just absolutely love when someone who's unknown comes up and has the power of God flowing through them through the pleasure of the Holy Spirit, and those that think they're the anointed ones are not having the same thing flow through them because they're not humble. And I love to see God's grace and operation that way. So I had a, a vision. It was really pretty simple. It was a ladder up into heaven, and I saw those who were blessing President Trump are also, and I just saw, blessing Israel, and as a result, are obeying God's word, and as a result, they were having peace and blessings in their life. And I saw they were climbing a ladder, literally, at, like Jacob's ladder, up to heaven. And they were hearing the voice of the Father, and they were obeying the word of God. And this was really important, so they were receiving blessing, and the nation of America was being blessed as a result. Then on the other side, I saw a slide towards destruction and hell, that many were choosing to curse our president and thereby curse America and thereby curse Israel and, and going against God's will for today and also going strictly and positively against God's word because it says to bless your leaders. We're going to get to that scripture. And they were going down the path of destruction and in their lives they didn't have peace and destruction was happening and, and many were going to go to hell as a result because they weren't they just had a heart to obey the ways of the world, and they were sliding down this slope, which is very dangerous. I've learned a long time ago, you can't really choose what to obey God in. You're either all in, and you decide to obey Him and what He says for you to do in His Word, or you're going to, be, you're going to slide down the slope of the world because the Word says you can't love the world, ways, and God. You've got to choose. And the Word says you're going to love one and hate the other. So you can't, you can't be in betwixt. You can't be in between. You have to be all in for God's ways and obedient to his commands in the word. So now that I've said that, let's go to the scriptures because everything should be foundationally based on the scriptures. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2. 
This is probably a foundational scripture um, that Paul tells to Timothy about praying for your leaders and actually praying for all men. And let's hear what Paul is saying here in this um, epistle to Timothy. He says, Therefore, I exhort, exhort, first of all, that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings, this is who he lists first, for kings and all who are in authority. Right off the bat, all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority. And here's why. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. And by the way, obey God. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. I mean, that should be enough. Seriously, when, when the Lord tells us something is good and acceptable in His sight, we ought to say amen, amen, and amen, and do it. There shouldn't be a debate. There shouldn't be arguments. There shouldn't be any other discussion. When He says to pray for the authorities, the kings, those who are in command, you do it. He says, because God our Savior desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. And we got to understand, what Marisol said is so true. The scriptures say God places people in authority and they are accountable to God. And there is one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Jesus Christ. It's not us. We are not the mediator. We've got to stop being the mediator. Whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, let's stop being the mediator. Let's simply bless our president, our leader of whatever country you're in, so that we can lead a peaceful life and obey God. And as we're going to see in a moment, actually be blessing Israel, which is foundational to even our nation and for your family to be blessed. We're going to see that in a moment. Now, he says... The mediator is Jesus Christ who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. And then he goes on to tell us to pray. So, <clears throat> very clear, pray for all who are in authority, all, our judges, our president, our senate, the House in the U.S., our governmental leaders in the state and the counties, we're to pray for all of them. That's what the Word says. So we're to pray for all of them. Now, let's take this a step further in this election. <clears throat> Before this election, the U.S. relations, you can read everything you want to read, between Israel and the U.S. were going downhill fast. And in fact, the leader of America was actually going against the leader of Israel. Okay, now let's just go to a foundational principle that comes before the Torah and that is under the Abrahamic covenant that we are all under as believers. Let's just go all the way back to the beginning of Genesis 12, 3. And let's see what God says, because this rule applies for all eternity about those who bless Israel. So if we elect and pray for and bless a leader who blesses Israel, then we are on the right road as a country to be blessed by God. Let's look at what God says. The Lord says to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Well, in verse 2, let's start with verse 2. I will make you a great nation, and we know who that is, that's Israel. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, in case you're thinking that this only applies to Abraham, that we only bless Abraham and not Israel, let's see what happens later on in the scriptures. Because remember, this covenant was repeated actually to Isaac and to Jacob. And, and we're going to jump all the way to... Uh, Numbers, and we're going to see a blessing in Numbers 24, 9. 
that is spoken over Israel. Now, in Numbers 24, we have to remember what time and what season this was in. This was when Israel is coming out of the desert and is, is going to go. They have come out of Egypt, the nation of Israel. They've been rescued from Egypt by Moses, and they're coming out. And now we have the people in the promised land of Canaan who are looking at this mass of Israelites that are coming at them, and one of the leaders wants Israel to be cursed. Listen to what happens here in verse 9. So, <clears throat> a prophet is hired to actually curse Israel, but it says the Spirit of the Lord falls on him, and instead he ends up blessing Israel. And listen to what he says. Numbers what, honey? 24, 9. <clears throat> And I'm going to really start with Numbers 24, 8. Because he's talking about Israel. God brings him out of Egypt. He has strength like an ox. So this prophet who was hired to curse Israel cannot curse him because God commands him to bless Israel. And he says, he has strength like a wild ox. He shall consume the nations, his enemies. He shall break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. He bows down, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who shall rouse him? Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. And then it goes on to say, and Balak, who's the one who hired Balaam, the prophet, his anger was aroused against him, and he struck his hands together, um, and he says, I called you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them with these three times. All three times he hired this prophet to curse Israel, and all three times he blessed Israel. And he made it very clear, because the whole nation of Israel was down in the valley. He said, blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. So this is not just Abraham, who's the father of Israel, but this is over the entire nation of Israel. So, Marisol, do you think that establishes that um, we're to bless Israel? Yeah, because the prophet said that he was only going to say what the Lord said. That's right. So if the Lord has appointed for Israel to be blessed, who are we? Well, and who are we to support a leader who would not bless Israel, right? Israel. Who, we, mean, we, 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 we must, as a nation, as individuals, as a church, and as a nation, I believe, be a blessing to Israel, as I believe it was the very foundation of why Actually, America was formed. I believe this was a major reason why America was formed, to be an ally for Israel and to be a blessing to Israel all these years. And America has been. Since Israel was formed in 1948, America's always stood by their side till this last president, and then things were going downhill. But now God has brought in a leader who has promised to bless Israel again and to stand by Israel's side. So, perhaps God sees things at a level that is much higher than we things see things, because the word says his ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. And he sees things we do not see. So blessing our leader has an added benefit of actually being a blessing to America. Because if we bless a leader and bless him to be a blessing to Israel, which we pray, Marisol and I, and he is a blessing to Israel, then we will be blessed as a result of that. This is really a simple truth of the word of God. This covenant made with Abraham is, is an eternal covenant, the word says. It, it, it is, it was, it's way before the law, way before the law. And therefore, it, it goes through all time and all eternity. And so then you ask yourself for... Well, and Dexter is not only made for all eternity, but it's an unconditional pact. An unconditional covenant because Abraham was asleep. So that covenant has not been broken because it was unconditional. It is still standing today. Well, and, and it had no conditions on yeah. Abraham. It right. simply said those who bless you will be blessed mm -hmm. and those who curse you will be blessed. It didn't say, Abraham, if you do the following right. things. God never placed those conditions even in it. So now, are we under the Abrahamic covenant? Yeah, we know that. The New Testament all talks about how we are... <laughs> under the Abrahamic covenant through which Christ came through, not under the Mosaic or the Torah. We're not under that covenant. Galatians 3.13. Let's turn to that. <clears throat> it says in verse 12, just so we deal with the law. Well, let's go to verse 11. 
that no one is justified <laughs> by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. So we know everything's through faith in Jesus Christ, not through the law that we're saved. That salvation is through faith. Verse 12, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. And I love this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And here it is. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the blessings of Abraham, and the word goes on to say in Galatians, that we are all sons and daughters of Abraham, those who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we're under those blessings. So if we're under those blessings, I think when the word says those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will be cursed, it should be very important to our hearts also. If it's important to the heart of God, it should be important to our hearts. I, I'm, I'm, if God says, you bless Israel, you'll be blessed, then that's exactly what's going to happen. And let's, you know, and I know we read this before, but I just want to go to Jeremiah 29, 11. 29, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 29, again. Because I want to make sure we even understand this. Because there's people that say, oh, America's wicked and da, da, da. There's well, no nation that is holy. But let's read what God says. That even if there's wickedness in our nation, which we all agree there is, no one is denying that. What happened when Israel was actually dispersed, because, punished because of their sins, and dispersed and taken captive into Babylon for 70 years? Which is what Jeremiah chapter 29 is about. What is God's command to the Israelites when they're in Babylon, which is a representative of the worst sin in the world, Babylon? That's why in Revelation, read it, Babylon is representative of sin. Let's see what God says in Jeremiah 29, 4. Even if you're in the midst of a sinful, wicked nation, what to do? Listen. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, yeah, because they sinned against God. No one's denying that. Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished, so he's going to multiply them, which he actually did. They multiplied greatly in Babylon. And listen to verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. And then he goes on to say, any prophets or diviners who are telling you something different than this, they were not sent by me, don't listen to them. Sounds familiar, huh? Some people today, they love to curse America. They love to use the Torah, which America's not under, by the way. That was a covenant only made with Israel. They love to use that and use the words of the Torah that were a covenant that was made between Israel, all the Israelites came and confessed that they would be under the blessing and the curse of the Torah. They did it in mass, in mass communities. And they were under the Torah. And the, Lord, and the word says that they have broken that covenant. That covenant has been broken. Now we have a new covenant in Jesus Christ, which we are under. And the predecessor of that was the Abrahamic covenant. This is what we are under today. And so if he's saying that in it, pray for the city, the place where you're in, because in it you will have peace. And by the way, you're going to prosper and multiply. I think that's relevant for us today. Because remember, what did 1 Timothy 2.2 2 say? The fruit of our prayers for our leaders would be, Marisol? Blessings. Peace. And peace. <clears throat> Remarkable, isn't it, how consistent God is in his ways and his promises? That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence when you pray for your leaders. So praying for the city we're in, the state we're in, the country we're in, for our leaders, is, a, is nothing but a blessing. Because as we do that, 
God will actually act on behalf of those leaders and bring his righteousness, his wisdom, his justice into their leadership and make them accountable to him because we're praying for them. And many of them will actually be saved, glory be to God, as a result of our prayers because God's desire is that all men are saved. That's why he says pray for them also. And then you'll live a peaceful life and be blessed. And you won't be cursing Israel directly or indirectly. And you won't be also cursing your nation further by allowing some of the greatest sins through the Supreme Court and through abortion and other things to be happening in our nation and standing for that and even who you elect. You'll actually be asking God to turn the tide back to his ways in our nation. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That's what we're going to be praying for. So, <clears throat> Psalm 122, Marisol. <clears throat> the apple of God's eye, Israel, Jerusalem. And by the way, Marisol, uh -huh. when Jesus comes back, where will he rule and reign for for a thousand years during the millennium? Where will In he be? Jerusalem. Salam. Amen. Oh, remarkable. That will actually be the throne of Jesus Christ. The King of King and Lord of Lords will be Jerusalem. It's a beautiful city. I love it. <clears throat> the most amazing place. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is a Psalm of David. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all those prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. And we're praying this, Father, in Jesus' yes. name as we say it. Peace be within your walls. Peace be to you, Jerusalem. Prosperity be within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we do pray for the peace of Israel. Yes. We do bless Israel, Lord. We love Israel and we bless Israel. We pray for protection over Israel. We pray that you'll place Psalm 91 protection over the leaders of Israel, over the IDF in Israel, over the Knesset in Israel, over all the people in Israel, that you will give them wisdom and the pillars of their government will be your righteousness and your justice. We ask you to bring over it through Netanyahu, their Lord, government. We pray for him. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his Knesset and his cabinet in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you will uncover any plots against Israel that are worldwide, that they will be uncovered, and that you will guard and keep the people of Israel no matter where they are dispersed throughout the world, Lord. We pray for their protection. And Lord, we pray for their eyes to be open to see, their ears to be open to hear, and their hearts to be open to re receive the truth of Jesus the Christ being the true Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, that their eyes, ears, and hearts will be open to receive yes. him and see him as the one whom they pierced on the cross in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, we pray for President Trump. Yes, Father. This is an important time, Lord. We ask you to bless his appointment and the voting on his appointment yes. <clears throat> for Supreme Court justice that is going on this week in the hearings, Father. Yes. I ask you to give them wisdom, and I ask you to align our Congress and our president to be one with thy perfect will, for our Supreme Court justice in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare and decree no weapon form will prosper against your appointment being made for Supreme Court justice of the United States of America in Jesus' name. We pray protection over him under Psalm 91 and no weapon form will prosper against us in yes. Jesus' name. Plead the blood of the Lamb over him and everyone who will hear his testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. And we bind the spirits of darkness from functioning within our Congress, within these hearings in the name of Jesus Christ. Silent their voices in Jesus' name. Their voices, name. they are deaf, dumb, and blind, and they may not communicate, and they may not affect our people who are making this vote and making these decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And I ask you to release your spirit into the meetings, Lord, and release thy will into their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, bless President Trump with wisdom. Bless his cabinet and him with justice and righteousness as the pillars of the government in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, open up his ears fully to hear thy voice and thy wisdom, Lord. Surround him with those with good counsel and give him ears to hear that counsel and to follow in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, and give him wisdom them. also for the future of America, what you see for it, Lord, that he will guide America in that path and none other in the name of Jesus. Lord, surround him with men that have a heart like Daniel and like Joseph. Yes. In the name of Jesus to be his assistants and his aides. Men that will give him advice that comes from the throne. Father, give him dreams, visions, and revelations. Speak to our president, Lord, I ask you. Speak to the vice president. Father, I ask you to send your Holy Spirit to the Oval Office in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus and to the Congress and to the Senate and to the Supreme Court in the name of Jesus to rule in the hearts of those people because you're the one, Lord, that is in control of the king. You put the desires in their hearts. Work in their hearts, Lord, for justice, righteousness, for holiness, and make them turn back to the ancient ways. To the ancient path. Amen. Yes, Father. This nation was a nation that was formed under God. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for that. In and Jesus we just declare name. in God we trust. I ask you to bless not only America, but also bless the leaders of everyone who's listening to that. Their leaders, Lord. Bless them for the same thing, for wisdom, Lord, for salvation, Lord. I ask you to bring salvation even into them, their families, their cabinets, and the governmental leaders, Lord. Mm -hmm. We ask you to pour out your spirit in all flesh, even within the government, Father, and establish thy ways in our governments, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring forth leaders that will see thy ways, thy mercy, thy compassion, thy justice, thy righteousness, and bring it forth into their countries in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we want all of our nations to be honoring you in our ways, Lord. Yes. And as people, we ask you to do this. As a church, we ask you to do this on behalf of all of our nations, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And align the church, Lord, we ask to be in unity. Spirit of unity, Holy Spirit, I ask you to be released and bring forth Psalm 133, yes. unity within the church to be blessing our leaders with one accord, Lord, in Jesus' name. We choose to obey your word. And now we ask you to write disobedience onto our hearts and remind us, Holy Spirit, anytime we need to pray for anything that's happening, including right now with the Supreme Court nomination, Lord, we ask you to rise us up. Yes. And Holy Spirit, pray through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. This has been your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, my beloved husband, Reverend Drexel Pelser. Amen. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to shalomshalom.org. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Blessings. Amen. Amen.